viewed a bunch of Yoda Master enclosures in the past, and Yoda Master reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review their brand new SSD. You can see this here. This is a Gen 4 NVMe, two terabytes. Looks like this is a new product coming out from them. These guys are specialists in enclosures, so hopefully they can do a good job with this NVMe here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this into a system. We'll test that out in terms of speeds, how the synthetic benchmarks are, temperatures when under load, and then we'll do some data transfer, see how fast it is. Nice little heat sink on this one here. So heat sink and pad. Okay. I'm actually gonna test this in a laptop this time. I often test these in desktops, but I wanna test it in a laptop, which is a more confined space. See how it goes. So it's a two terabyte single-sided, no dual-sided, that's nice. Okay, nice little aesthetic to it. Let's open up this here, take this off, see what's underneath for the controllers and that. So Maxio controller, if you can see that. Maxio controller, chips probably, more or less unlabeled. BWNA BWN0AQF1B1HCAD. And there's four of them. One, two, three, four. So there must be 512 gigabyte modules. Looks good though. Y7000 Pro. We'll do a few tests here. We have hardware info on the right here with the temperature and the usage, I guess. There's not really anything being written to it, obviously. We have the drive here. It's actually being used as a C drive in this computer. We'll give it, you know, see how it fares as an actual operating system drive. So we'll do a few tests here, see how it performs, check the thermals. Then what we'll do is we'll write a bunch of data to it, read a bunch of data to, from it, and just see if it's able to sustain those speeds. So we're gonna do some writes here, and then we'll come back with the results here from the uh, two synthetic benchmarks. Okay, so we're back, pretty straightforward here. Nice reads, gen four speeds, pretty standard. Upper, the reads are good, 6,000 or so. Writes good, totally fine there. And you can see here through Auto Bench, same idea. Gets a little bit slower on the top end, but overall it's pretty fine for writes. Reads are really fast around what they advertise. Usually you don't get like full 7,000, so it's exactly as they advertise. And again, this is being used as an operating system drive, so I'm giving it kind of its worst case scenario here. Uh, and the thermals are very good actually here. You can see the temperatures uh, averaged 49, 44, and 44. This is in a very thin ultrabook. I actually have this inside my framework laptop, a 13 inch laptop with no heat sink. So there's no heat sink on this thing. It comes with a heat sink, so if you're gonna use it on desktop, but I mean, clearly this is good for not necessarily being used uh, you know, in a big system, you could throw it in a laptop or something like that because the thermals there are very impressive. So that's fine. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually fill the drive up a lot closer and see if it gets slower when it's doing that. But we'll also check some transfer speeds kind of live as we're going as well. Okay, we'll just do a mid transfer check-in here. Just looking at the speeds here, realistically, this is, I mean, it's really good to be honest. It's getting up to be pretty fast. What I really care about here is that it's not dropping down to zero. I mean, I'm writing all kinds of different game data, so it's gonna go up and down, up and down. Uh, but what we're worried about here is how long it can basically go without dropping down to zero and staying at zero before it runs out of cash. So uh, it looks like it ran, wrote about uh, probably three to 400 gigabytes straight through at full speed. And now it's starting to drop down a little bit there, probably starting to deplete some of the cash there. So pretty typical of a drive like that. And it goes right back up, clears the cache, goes way back up, writes fast. I might come down a little bit again here, but it's not dropping down to zero and staying static. Some drives will do that, especially like the Crucial P3, Crucial P3 Plus, for example. They'll write, well, they don't even write 300. They'll write maybe, I don't even know, 100 gigs. And okay, so we filled up the drive here. It did take a little while because it did run out of cache eventually. So it's not going to be one of those drives where you can just write and write and write and write and write, which is fine. I mean, I don't think that's really what it's designed for, you know, doing 500 gigabyte transfers at a time. Uh, it seems to be fine for, I don't know, probably a couple hundred to 300 uh, gigabytes in a go, and then it starts to slow down, which is fine. I mean, don't use it to move gigantic files at a time. That seems okay. But let's come in here now. We can see it's quite full, and we'll just rerun those tests here. Okay, so here's the results now. When it's full, you can see the reads are maintained, realistically. Writes do slow down. That's pretty typical of any, well, really any drive, realistically. Once they start to get full, they do slow down on the writes there. So same with Adventure over here, same idea. But it's maintaining full write, uh, full read speed over here. And again, it's not hot or anything like that. So what do I think of the drive here? Pretty straightforward. 
This is gonna be a superb drive for gaming. Realistically, pop it into your PS5. You're gonna get incredibly good speeds, realistically. In a PS5 here, you can see, quite good. Very normal. Or as a secondary drive, throw it in your system as a game drive. Like, for example, if I have a laptop with two drives or a desktop, throw it in, game drive, perfect. I wouldn't necessarily use it if you're the type of person who dumps huge amounts of data on a regular basis. So, you know, if you're offloading 500 gigabytes several times a day, not that it seems to have any degradation issues or anything like that, but it does start to slow down after you dump a couple hundred gigs at a time. Very, you know, niche use for something like that if you're going to be dumping that. But if you do, it does start to slow down. You start to get a little bit of a crawl situation going on. That happens with a lot of drives pretty normal for this type of drive realistically. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is use this drive here as you know, a secondary game drive. Realistically, even as an operating system here, I've been using it as the operating system. It's not laggy, no problems whatsoever. Boots super fast, no problems at all. Uh, it's only when you dump hundreds of gigabytes at one time onto the drive out of nowhere, it starts to slow down, otherwise it's fine. So, and the other thing I think also that we need to point out here is that it does actually use, it does actually stay really cool. So inside of something like a PS5 in a closed device like that, laptop, especially as a secondary drive, it's gonna be fantastic because this thing does, just does not get hot. You can see that there, the averages, even the peak temperatures are nothing on this drive, even when I was blasting it for super long periods of time. So it's a really good drive overall for especially a secondary game drive. I think it's kind of a no brainer. Pick it up, use it for game purposes, and you're gonna have a blast with it realistically because it's gonna stay nice and cool, not gonna get super hot and throttle, and it's gonna maintain when it's full, like you just fill the thing up with games. But otherwise, really good drive realistically here from Yoda Master. So as expected, just like the other stuff, it seems to be quite good.